Hello again, everyone. Thank you for joining me for another lesson in the New Testament is Fake series. This is lesson number 184, and my title today is Apostle Paul Lies About Creation. Let's read here from 1 Corinthians chapter 15, and we'll read from about verse 42 to 51. So also is the resurrection of the dead. It is sown in corruption, it is raised in incorruption. It is sown in dishonor, it is raised in glory. It is sown in weakness, it is raised in power. It is sown a natural body, it is raised a spiritual body. There is a natural body and there is a spiritual body. And so it is written, the first man, Adam, was made a living soul. The last Adam was made a quickening spirit. Howbeit, that was not the first which is spiritual, but that which is natural, and afterward that which is spiritual. The first man is of the earth, earthy. The second man is the Lord from heaven. As is the earthy, such are they also that are earthy, and as is the heavenly, such are they also that are heavenly. My concern starts at about verse 47. I'm going to continue reading. But he says the first man is of the earth, and so is earthy, and the second man, speaking of Jesus, I guess, is from heaven. Yet they're going to use that to teach you throughout the New Testament that just as Christ was transformed, um, was made rather as the second Adam, or that second man that they're speaking of from heaven, so you can be transformed as well by his spirit. So I guess it's clear to understand that you can change your nature. You can be of the earth like Adam, your earthy, but when you receive Christ, then you change your nature and now you are no longer of earth. You are of heaven or from heaven. As it puts it here in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 47, that the second man is the Lord from heaven. And so if you're going to be like Christ, the teaching when you digs into it in New Testament theology is that you're going to be changed spiritually and so you become of another nature, a heavenly nature or a spiritual nature and that has its roots in heaven. So now your roots are transferred from earth to having roots in heaven. How is it that you can be of heaven when you've never been to heaven? If you were born of earth, of Adam, you must be of earth, of Adam, no matter what. That means not only your physicality, but also your spirituality is of earth, is of Adam. Because the only spirituality you know is spirituality that you got from what goes on on earth. That is why so-called spiritual teachings of the Bible has to bring an, a spiritual experience to you on earth because your spiritual experience is earthly. And you are so tied to the earth that even when people go to heaven, they usually tell you they come back to earth. Now you got Enoch, special case, and Elijah. I'm addressed those before, but we can't speak to these people to prove that, right? We can't. These are just spiritual writings. Because what do you do with the other people in other religions who say their people went to heaven as well? Listen, you there, what's your name? Joe or Billy or Michelle? You can have a spiritual experience right now. And you tell somebody that you went to heaven in your sleep or while you're meditating or while you're praying and reading a Bible and having your devotions. You were like caught away in the spirit and you had a moment and you went to heaven. It seemed like probably about uh, half an hour you were gone and you saw all kinds of beautiful things in heaven and whatever. And then by the time you came back, your devotion just stopped because the, the whole sensation just changed. People tell stories like that all the time. But nobody thinks you are from heaven. 
you're having a spiritual experience on earth, it seems. But you know, if you lived thousands of years ago when these things were being written, and you were actually a teacher, or you started to tell your experience of going to heaven for half an hour while you were having devotions, and you amassed a great following of thousands of people, and then you end up teaching in a temple because people love to hear you speak and so on, and, and they bring you their tithes and their gifts and so on and bring you free food all the time. And you spend the rest of your days, like you leave, left your job in the field, and you spend the rest of your days teaching like that thousands of people who come to see you every week. Then your experience of going to heaven would have been written in a book as well, a spiritual book. Why is it that your spiritual experience that you're having right now can't be written in a book when you say, I went to heaven yesterday in my devotions? See, it's the same experience because it's only heaven. And we're all going there. The only difference between you having it today and them thousands of years ago is that somebody wrote theirs down and they didn't write yours down. That's all. It's the same experience. It's the same experience. These people didn't go to no heaven that you can prove any different than you go there. Can you show me, prove to me that Enoch went to heaven and that Elijah went up in a chariot to heaven? Can you prove that? It's just the same experience that you're having. It's a story that you would tell, but nobody would actually think that you actually went to heaven they would just say you had a spiritual experience if you were telling them yesterday. They would just say you just had a spiritual experience, like some strong vision or something in your mind. You got caught away or raptured in your mind into this vision-like kind of feeling. They'd say you had a spiritual experience. No different from what they would have had back then. Nobody can prove that people go to heaven. So let's go on here. Verse 48, as is the earthy, such are they also that are earthy, and as is the heavenly, such are they also that are heavenly. And as we have borne the image of the earthy, we shall also bear the image of the heavenly. That is a red flag right there. And verse 49, again, on top of all the other lessons I've taught in my New Testament is fake series, shows that the New Testament is fake. 1 Corinthians 15, 49. I'm going to be explaining it as I go on. Now, verse 15. Now, this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, neither doth corruption inherit corruption. I just a long time ago as well, the Hebrews had their kingdom. The most I took them out of Egyptian bondage, and he put them into a land of their, of their own. There was a, an Israelite kingdom. They were ruling all over the place, beating up people and with the power of God and miracles from heaven, lightning and thunder and fire and brimstone and death angel. All kinds of stuff happened in the Old Testament. They had a kingdom and they were, were they spirit? No, they were flesh and blood and they inherited an earthly kingdom over there in the so-called Middle East, an earthly kingdom, and there were still humans, there were still people, flesh and blood. That's why when the enemies came to fight with them, the enemies brought swords and daggers and spears and so on, because they were fighting people who were flesh and blood. So the Hebrews were in the kingdom of God given to them. So this here says, flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. They had the kingdom of God living in it was Israel. That was the kingdom of the Most High. Which he says he will reestablish in like Isaiah 2. Right? But this just really seems strange. Neither doth corruption inherit corruption. 51 and... Let me see, 51 and, yeah, 51, I'll read 51 and stuff. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. So he's trying to say, we're going to be changed from this regular, normal, Adamic physicality. 
right? We're going to be changed. And they had us believing from I was a small child growing up in Jamaica that we are going to be, you know, like having some new spiritual kind of body. Yet they said we're going to eat the Lord's Supper. Um, and I used to always wonder, well, where do we poo and pee out the food in heaven? So it makes me wonder what's Enoch and Elijah doing when they need to go to the bathroom. It sounds funny to you. But why are you being given physical bodies? When earth was pure and had the strongest power of God among men, Adam and Eve would have definitely needed to poo as well. That's why you're telling me, well, they're spiritual, they don't need it. It's the same like your spiritual new body. You're gonna have you're gonna have bodily functions, right? That's why you are made with those organs that can have you expel waste matter from your body because you are human. You got flesh body, and that's how flesh body gets rid of waste matter in the body. Along with sweating it out and so on, right? You go use the bathroom. So Adam and Eve would have used the bathroom as well. That's why as time went on and people grew and society started to be set up and so on, then they made washrooms, toilets and so on. At earlier stages in human existence, they would have been digging dirt, digging up the dirt from the ground to poon and covering it over and so on. Because they were human. Well, if they came from Adam, although we know this whole Adam stuff is a trick, but if they came from Adam, then Adam would have been doing the same thing. Eve would have been doing the same thing. Because as they ate the fruit from the trees, they would have had to push the stuff back out of their bodies. You're telling me Elijah and Enoch wouldn't need to do that as well? We know they're eating because you need food in heaven. Because the New Testament says we're going to eat a Lord's Supper. Big Lord's Supper after the rapture up in heaven. So it's telling you, and the trees for the healing of the nations and so on, it's telling you that your body, even in heaven, is still going to need food. In the kingdom of heaven or the kingdom of God, you're still going to need food in your physical body. So what's this second man is from heaven and like you don't need all this stuff? So the second man who's from heaven needs all bodily functions like the physical first man on earth. Let's look here now from Genesis chapter 2, right? Because I'm going to show you now how Apostle Paul lied about creation. Because in all this talk here, you're saying, oh, the first man is from the earth and the second man, the first man is made from corruption, but the second man is from heaven and through him there is no corruption and so on. The first man was sown in corruption. This, the next man is going to the spiritual man now to let you believe in Christ and get your spiritual life from Christ will then mean that you now are a spiritual person and so you have incorruption. It must be something in you that generates that incorruption. It's their belief in Christ. That's what they're teaching us. But look at what Genesis chapter 2 says. Verse 7, And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground, and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. But look again now. So he breathed into him the breath of life. So he's breathing in the Spirit. Well, you got the Spirit on the day of Pentecost, and through Christ you get the Spirit, and so on. So you get the spiritual breath. It's the Spirit, the Ruah. Well, Adam didn't get his Ruah, on the day of Pentecost, or you in your Hebrew Israelite teaching or Christian teaching, Adam got his ruah, or the breathing in, in the garden. Adam got his ruah, or the breathing in, in the garden. He got his in the garden. First Corinthians 15.42 So also is the resurrection of the dead. It is sown in corruption. It is raised in incorruption. Now, if he formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into him the breath of life, right? You breathe it into his nostrils. They're trying to make you think that Adam was made out of corruption because the New Testament makes it the clay or the dirt, the dust of the ground, look like it's something bad, corruption. No, that's glorious. 
That's why the Most High used it to make you. He wouldn't make you with garbage and filthiness. So Adam was not made out of death or corruption like the New Testament teaching, New Testament theology makes you think. Uh, uh, Apostle Paul is lying about creation. Apostle Paul, Apostle Paul, Apostle Paul is lying about creation. He made you of the dust of the ground. And that is actually making you have a, a very well-functioning body. No wonder it also teaches the same Apostle Paul that your body is a temple of the Lord. How can your body be corruption because it's made as like the first man made from the earth? But your corrupted body is going to be the temple of the Lord? But your corrupted body is going to be the temple of the Lord? You see, this is all this esoteric teaching that they're using in the New Testament, which don't make any sense. That's why they're being exposed so much. And the Apostle Paul is being exposed once again. In this case, as having lied about creation. The resurrection of the dead, it is sown in corruption. As if the first man has to deal with, with corruption. By being made to not be able to escape corruption. But if you receive Christ or his spirit, you will escape that corruption. Because he says here now, it is sown in corruption, it is raised in incorruption. Meaning that through Christ, you're going to get incorruption through his spirit. That's what it's really trying to say to you. But look here now, Genesis chapter 2 verse 7 again. He made him out of the dust of the ground. That right there is telling you that he was not made in corruption. Because if he was all about corruption, meaning Adam... How could the Most High just desire to put his stuff in a dirty, corrupted body? To put his breath into him? No. He would not have put that in it. If so, then why do you say that, yeah, well, the New Testament says you can eat all the meat, all these different kinds of meat, because you can just bless it. And, and uh, through Christ, all the meat is fine to eat. It's okay to eat and so on. And now some people are eating the swine and saying, well, Christ sanctified it all. So he can sanctify a swine that the Torah people say is bad. But the first man, Adam, that you come from is corruption. But a swine is better because Christ sanctified the swine. But he breathed into his knowledge the breath of life. Now, let's, the breath of life now. Run back to 1 Corinthians 15, 42, and it's raised in incorruption. So when he breathed into him the supposed carcass of, or just a body of Adam, made from the dust of the ground, but then he put Adam, the spirit in Adam, and he became a living soul. So that living soul means Adam was raised without corruption. The New Testament says raised in incorruption, but they're dealing with through Christ. But this is showing you that Adam, before there was even a patriarch or a, an Israelite nation or Israelite high priest or prophet to teach anything. Adam, and before there was a Christ that was needed to die in Calvary, Adam already had incorruption because Adam was raised up from the ground, from the dust of the ground where he was formed from. He was raised up out of that dust with life that had that knew no corruption. Adam was raised in incorruption from the dust of the ground when the Most High blew his spirit into him and he became a living soul. Living in Hebrew thought right there would let you know there was no corruption in Adam. None. So you don't need no Christ for that incorruption. So trying to get to Calvary and make your way to an altar is not necessary to have incorruption because incorruption is not given through Christ it is given from the creator here it is now verse 43 again 15 first Corinthians 15 43 it is sown in dishonor it's trying to make you think that everything about life before Christ is about dishonor and corruption and filthiness and garbage and unholiness and so on but this here is really letting you know that something is wrong Paul is lying about creation because 
Adam would not have been sown as the first man, the first example of what all men should be, could not possibly have been sown by the creation in the earth, the dust that he came out of, in dishonor and corruption. Because what's the most I'm trying to communicate? There'd be nothing to go back to. Like we're saying, give me that old time religion, I want to go back and, and so on, and reaching back for original things, pristine conditions and so on. So the pristine, the original condition of Adam would have had to be pure. Not something that is low down and disgusting and unholy and unsanctified like the New Testament is trying to make you think. Paul is lying about creation. Adam was made pure. In fact, let me see if I can find this one. Hold on. Now look at this, Ecclesiastes chapter 7 verse 29, Lo, this only have I found, that God hath made man upright, so Paul is lying, and he says he's an apostle, he has made man upright, but they have sought out many inventions. So he made man upright, that means pure, right, righteous, in good standing with God. That's why they usually say there was a fall. How could you have fallen if you were always corrupted? Right? So he made man upright. So Adam was not raised from the ground in corruption. Sorry, uh, yeah, with corruption. He started out as pure, as righteous before God. Had a good relationship according to the Torah until they supposedly fell. All right? So Apostle Paul is lying. And so 1 Corinthians 15, 43 again, it goes on to the latter part of that verse. Sown in weakness, it is raised in power. Trying to make you again think that Adam had some weakness and so on. He had great spiritual strength. You say you are stronger because of the commandments, the Torah that you received from God and the nation of Israel was the strongest in terms of purity on earth because they received the, 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 the covenant with God. Well, it, what would have Adam have received? He got the Torah right there placed right into him. The spirit itself, the source, was breathed into him. It is sown a natural body, it is raised a spiritual body. This this is really this is really ridiculous. Um, the first Adam was made a living soul, the last Adam made a quickening spirit. Well if it didn't quicken Adam, how did he get up and become a living soul? It's the same idea. It says the quickening means to produce alive. Right to cause to live, make alive by spiritual power to arouse and investigate. Investigate. And that there is First Corinthians 15 verse 45 where it says a quickening spirit. Adam was made a quickening spirit. The last Adam, excuse me, made a quickening spirit talking about Jesus. And so then you would then receive the same quickening spirit from the Messiah if you believe in the New Testament Christ. But really the first Adam got up with a quickening spirit when the Most High breathed the breath of life into him and he began to investigate like the word quickening means right here. Adam got up and investigated his surroundings. And the Most High, the Creator, was helping him with his investigation by giving him some preliminary instructions, eat from this tree and that tree and so on, but don't touch this, don't eat from this one, and so on and so forth, right? So he gave himself and he says, name the animals. Adam was, Adam woke up, so to speak, with investigation that the Creator participated in, in helping him investigate by giving him those knowledge. All right, so this Apostle Paul here is out to lunch. He's lying about creation. Verse 49, And as we have borne the image of the earthly, we shall also bear the image of the heavenly. Again, Apostle Paul is lying about creation, because look now what creation says. You know very well, Genesis chapter 1, verse, because they're making you think that you're not going to get this, this image of the Spirit from Christ in the New Testament. No, before there's ever a Jesus Christ, known on earth, Adam got that according to the Torah. Verse 27, Genesis 1, So God created man in his own image, but they're telling you that Apostle Paul is saying the image is of Christ when Christ came. And the whole thing blew up 
in his life and death and resurrection and so on and, and outpouring of the spirit on the day of Pentecost. He's saying you can get it through that Christological experience. You'll get that image, that heavenly spiritual image. But Adam already got the heavenly spiritual image in Genesis 1 and verse 27. So God created man in his own image and in the image of God. So he bypassed the so-called son that they so-called said was sitting up in heaven at the right hand of God on some smaller throne. But Adam got his image directly. So Adam did not associate with an image of Christ. Adam did not believe in Christ. He did not believe in the Messiah. He did not teach a Messiah. He did not do any of that stuff. But Adam bypassed any so-called Christ because really he never knew any Christ and Christ was not necessary to Adam. But he went right to the source and got his image from God because God gave it to him. And in the image of God created he him, male and female created he them. So they both got the image. They didn't need any image from Christ. Apostle Paul is lying about creation. Apostle Paul is lying about creation. 